Hey, good morning. It's Councillor Glenn Gower, and this morning I'm at the Amberwood Golf Course. Uh, I'm here today because they have a fundraiser happening to all day today till 6 p.m. and tomorrow on Sunday till 6 p.m. It's a putting contest. So for two dollars a putt or five dollars for three putts, uh, all proceeds. Drop my card there. All proceeds go to the uh, Stittsville Food Bank, and there's some great prizes. It's a 25 foot putt and uh, you can try your luck and raise some money for the food bank. It's a, a lovely place to be here at the golf course and uh, kind of a chilly day. You know, I was out yesterday on my bike on the Trans Canada Trail and um, uh, just driving along a little west of Stittsville and I, I got the smell of of fall. It smelled a bit like fall. It was a little bit cooler. That humidity broke. And I don't know if it's, uh, you know, that, that smell you get from some of the tree uh, leaves starting to fall and starting to to uh, to decompose, but it felt a bit like fall and it feels a bit like fall today with the cooler weather. And a lot of people are thinking about back to school. Next week is back to school for some students in our area. So you're gonna see some school buses out. You're gonna see some kids walk into school. So please be aware and, and pay attention in the community. Um, I'll try to get this in today before it rains as well. Uh, talking about schools, um, Ottawa Public Health uh, provided an update this week on, on a number of things, among them uh, some of the continuing efforts to ensure that schools remain safe for students and uh, doing everything we can to reduce the spread of COVID-19 in our community. So at schools, there's going to be a continued focus on what we've seen all along. Screening, daily screening, important for parents and students to do the daily screening, mask wearing, distancing, hand washing, all these basic things. This year, one thing they're adding is take home testing. So if uh, a, a student is at school and they do have symptoms, schools will have the uh, the ability to send them home uh, with, a, with a take home test. So you won't necessarily have to go to the larger community clinics. So they're, they're gonna start rolling that out in priority neighborhoods first. And then as the school year goes through, it'll be available at more and more schools in our community as well. Um, what else can I say about COVID-19? We're continuing slowly to keep those numbers going up in terms of vaccinations, uh, but it's obviously really important that everyone get their two doses of the COVID-19 vaccine uh, so that we can keep COVID at bay. And thank you to everyone who has taken the time to do that. If you have questions about the vaccine, if you're not sure about where to go for a vaccination, if you have uh, looking for someone to talk to, a nurse or a, uh, a doctor, Go to ottawapublichealth.ca. There are lots of great resources there and lots of, uh, lots of information and lots of people that you can contact as well if you have questions. Uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Um, we started a thing a couple weeks ago. Of course, uh, these videos are live on Facebook. Then they go on YouTube. And a couple weeks ago, uh, we are, we're podcasting this update in audio format as well. So if you listen to podcasts on Spotify or iTunes or any of the other podcasting apps, you can listen to this every single week. Search for Counselor Glenn on your favorite app and you can subscribe and listen there. And also, uh, we're now sending out our email newsletter every Wednesday to or over 5,500 subscribers. So thank you to everybody who subscribes to the newsletter or watches or listens to these updates every week. I really appreciate it. Some local updates I want to tell you about. First of all, it's it's uh, this is not happy news to share for me. It's uh, a piece of land known as the Tartan Land. So this is land along Fernbank Road, uh, a little bit west of Shea Road, and just east of Caribou and Lierd and uh, John Sydney Streets. Um, there's a patch of, of forest there that in the next week or so, uh, many of those trees will be cut down for a new subdivision that's being built. This was approved back in 2014, and we've known this has been coming for a while, but uh, there will be trees cut starting next week. Uh, the city has issued a tree per permit. The area has been um, marked off to make sure that any environmentally sensitive areas are not touched. And there's also a, I believe it's about an 11 meter buffer of trees on the west side of the site that is being preserved and there'll be a walking path through there in the future development. And I have also asked the, uh, asked the forestry department, asked the developer to keep the future park block as a tree block. We'd like to eventually build a, a woodland park there, similar to Joe Lewis Park in Potter's Key and Putney Park in, um, in uh, Westwood. So that's coming up this week. There is more information on my website and on Facebook. Coming up in a couple weeks, um, there has been uh, over many, many years, waste management 
has been seeking approvals from the province and from the City of Ottawa for the Carp Road landfill. And I just want to give you a heads up about this. On Tuesday, FEDCO, which is our uh, Finance and Economic Development Committee at the City, will be reviewing a contract. It's called a host municipality agreement or host community agreement between the City and Waste Management that will set out a lot of the terms for community compensation uh, for, from waste management to the city of Ottawa for any waste that arrives at that landfill. And uh, so I'll, I'll share some more information about that over the next week. The uh, information was just published on Thursday. So I'll, uh, I'll try to distill some of that information and add an update to my website later this week. I've been talking to a lot of residents this week, uh, many phone calls actually about blasting in our community. When will it stop? Is there damage to homes and so on? Um, when will it stop? Well, right now what they're doing, uh, let me go back. Earlier this summer, there was blasting happening for a new subdivision called Shea Village at Shea and Fernbank. That work is done. Next, they moved to blasting for a new trunk sewer. This is a city sewer to serve new homes and also uh, improve capacity for existing homes in our community. That's running from Shea Road along the future Cope Road corridor, uh, past Shea Road, uh, Fernbank Road. Anyways, in the south part of our community, they need to blast for that because the sewer, of course, goes underground in the rock down there. So they're proceeding with that blasting right now between Fernbank and Shea Road. There's still a few more weeks left of that. And then they're going to move to the east, uh, yes, to the east side of Shea Road, and there'll be some additional blasting required there. So bottom line, we have a few more weeks of blasting happening. And even once that's done next spring um, and in the future, there's still quite a bit of land in Stittsville that will likely be developed and that will likely require blasting. I know it's uh, even more disruptive right now because of the number of people working from home. In terms of does it cause damage, if your home is within 75 meters of the blast site, that's not a very high distance, uh, there's a pre-inspection required by law that has to be done and they take photos and they document the condition of your home. If you're outside of that 75 meter radius, that pre-inspection is not required. Um, and also the, the companies are operating under provincial and federal regulations. They also have to answer to their insurance companies. So if there's any damage happening beyond that very minimal radius, um, certainly there's a lot of concern around that and their insurance premiums would, would basically skyrocket. So there's a lot of incentive for the blasting companies and their engineers to ensure that blasting is controlled and well below the specified provincial and federal limits. Uh, they also set up monitoring stations at different locations further and further away from the blast site so they understand what impact that blasting may be having. If you have concerns about your home or you have questions about blasting, contact me. Be happy to put you in touch with the blasting engineer that's been hired by Kavanaugh and uh, they can answer any questions and if there is concern about damage, they really want to know about that too because obviously their chief concern is making sure the blasting is doing what it's supposed to do which is break up rocks on the site and not causing any further damage or impact to homes or buildings in the community. We had a super busy week at City Hall this week, uh, particularly on Thursday, planning committee. We had a 10-hour meeting uh, on a number of planning files. A lot of the focus, though, was around housing affordability. Uh, we had a big report on the city's plans for capital investments to create uh, new affordable homes in our community. So several hundred homes to be created through funding from the city and the federal government, different levels of government. That's good. We also tackled a very difficult file, the uh, Herringate Hazel View file. Several years ago, uh, there were some pretty brutal evictions of tenants there. And as a result of that, we've entered into a, a, a contract, the first of its time, a a first of its kind in Ottawa, a memorandum of understanding with a private developer that will do a number of things, including ensuring that any future tenants that may be evicted have a place to go on the site in the same area uh, so they won't be losing their homes without any kind of recourse, and also putting some pretty significant uh, rent protections in uh, and some maximum rent limits uh, to ensure uh, that they're, they're affordable housing and uh, that, that uh, we're creating more affordable housing units. We've got a, a huge problem in Canada and especially in Ottawa um, around affordable housing, around housing supply, whether it's affordable housing for people who are in the, the lowest income brackets who are really struggling to be able to afford a place to live, uh, 
or perhaps uh, you've seen it through young adults who are trying to uh, find some place to rent or get into the housing market, or perhaps older adults are, are looking at how they afford a place to live should they decide to downsize. We really do not have enough housing supply in our city or in our country for the demand, and it's pushing up prices of new homes, and it's pushing up resale prices, and it's pushing up rents. So uh, this is when people talk about the housing crisis, this is really what it's all about. And uh, I have a, a number of files, a number of conversations, and a number of initiatives underway at the city to try to tackle this where we can from the city level. Obviously, we need some additional help and investment from the other levels of government as well. I'll talk more about this in the coming weeks because it's pretty important and I think it's going to be one of the chief uh, focus of, of the city over the next few years. Next week at City Hall, another busy week, we've got a built heritage subcommittee. I'm a member of, of that. We've got an agriculture and rural affairs committee. I'm a member of that. We have a board of health strategic planning session. I'm a member of that. There's also a transportation committee meeting, which I'm not a member of, but I'll probably tune into because there's usually issues of interest. Um, on a local level, a few things. We did a, uh, a photo at the Wildwood sign this week with some of the companies and organizations that helped make that sign possible. A really, commu a really a true community partnership. Nautical Lands Group, Kevin Pigeon, I'd like to say thank you for, for uh, his team's contributions. They did the design, provided the stone, and also uh, the masonry expertise to get that built. And to Stittsville Glass and Signs, thank you for your work in creating the nameplate that goes on the sign. So lots of people involved. Just wanted to highlight those two businesses in particular. Uh, this week, paving happened on Victor Street, which is really good news. Um, that'll provide a much smoother ride for, uh, for residents where the road was cut open for the construction work earlier this year. And we've also installed some temporary no stopping signage to mitigate some of the construction traffic. And there's more work being done there as well. Stay tuned. Uh, the Palladium closure that I talked about last week has now been delayed to September 17th. The construction company is waiting on some approvals from the MTO, the Ministry of Transportation in Ontario. So that's September 17th. And uh, we received a new site plan control application, a development application for a new Catholic school on Defence Street. This is in the Fernbank area, just east of Robert Grant near Cope Street. I uh, also got an update. If you live on Friendly Crescent, I bet you've been wondering, when is that empty lot on the south side of Friendly Crescent finally going to be finished? We have some dates for you. The pathway is going to be paved by September 15th, and the landscaping will be done by about October 15th, finally. And uh, then the city will be responsible for keeping that in good shape going forward. Some reminders going into next week. Uh, we have a meeting about the Brightside Pedestrian Pathway updates, uh, upgrades rather. It's on Monday at 6 p.m. I believe. There's information on my website. So if you live on Brightside, Hope, Hope Town, Baywood, that area, you may be interested in participating to see what that's all about. Uh, we have some trail maintenance that started last week along the Trans-Canada Trail. It's actually uh, for, for maintenance of the Hazeldean drain to ensure that uh, there's no flooding that happens along the trail or the adjacent properties. There's more work coming in September and October. Please see my website for more information. And I want to remind you as well that tomorrow the market continues at the barn next to Village Square Park, right on Abbott Street, just uh, east of Stittsville Main Street. And there's also a fundraiser organized by the Knights of Columbus happening at the park. So lots going on in the community. That was a lot of updates today. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in as always. I'm going to go uh, try, my, try my hand at a putt here and see if I can sink a ball here at the Amberwood Golf Course. Uh, drop by the Raising Money for the Food Bank and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take care.